Hi, my name is Zephy McKenna. Uh, I'm a senior data scientist here at Wayfair, and today I'd like to tell you a little bit about multi-arm bandits. Um, since this is a very brief video, I'm not going to go deep into the math here, uh, but multi-arm bandits are a very cool and a pretty intuitive uh, technique that's used all over the place in e-commerce. So if you're considering a job uh, in industry and data science, this is definitely something that you should know about. Um, the basic idea behind the multi-arm bandit uh, in the past is that you have um, many of these one-arm bandits, or if you're not familiar with old-time casino slang, uh, slot machines, right? So you have a whole bank of these slot machines, and you need to, uh, and, and they have different rates of return, and you need to figure out which one has the best rate of return so that you can then play that one and make some money. That is the conception of the multi-arm bandit problem historically, right? So how is this applicable to e-commerce? Well, as I mentioned, it actually occurs all over the place. Anytime that you have uh, anything that you either need to sort or that you need to choose the best one of, um, let me give you a couple examples. Uh, let's say that you have um, some ads, right? And you wanna know which of the ads uh, drives the most traffic to your site, right? Well, each one of these ads is a bandit with an unknown rate of return. So you put up the different ads and you get feedback based on who is uh, coming to your site. And then you can figure out which one is the best and do that one, right? Similarly, if you have a whole bunch of products, let's say, uh, which at Wayfair we have a whole bunch of products, <laughs> and you need to sort them based on popularity, right? Well, each one of the products is a bandit and it has an unknown rate of return, an unknown popularity. So you sort them in an order, you get feedback based on who is buying what, and then you can reorder them based on that feedback. Now, this feedback component is key um, because we get to play each one of these one-armed bandits, right? Um, we get information about the true rate of return, uh, sort of incremental information, but we get a lot of it. Right? especially if we have a lot of customers, like you do at an e-commerce site, um, or a lot of visitors, I guess I should say. But at, at, at Wafer, we have a lot of customers as well. So this puts us in the realm of reinforcement learning. Right? Reinforcement learning tries to balance exploration, that is, in this context, uh, figuring out which of these one-armed bandits is the best, with exploitation, in this context, playing the one that has given the best rate of return so far, and making money. Right? Now there are many, many uh, techniques out there that try to balance exploration and exploitation, specifically for a multi-arm bandit problem. Um, let me just talk about a couple. Uh, the most common one that you may not have heard of, ironically, is Epsilon First. Um, now Epsilon First is the idea, in this case, uh, Epsilon is explore, where we explore first, we balance out all of our traffic, and we explore for however much time we need to figure out which one is the best, and then for the rest of time, we exploit. Now this is a very, very, very common technique, and the reason you may not have heard of it is because it is also called A-B testing, right? If you know anything about e-commerce, you've heard about A-B testing. Well, it turns out this is a subset of multi-arm bandits. Another very common one, Epsilon Greedy. In this case, you choose a small amount of the time, let's say 10% of the time, where you are going to Epsilon or explore. The rest of the time, you will exploit, right? So 10% of the time, you're gonna choose a random order, put a random ad up, and then the rest of the time, you're going to do the best one that you've found so far and try to make some money. So both of those are very common. Um, let me just tell you about my personal favorite, very intuitive, um, it's called Thompson sampling. Now if we have uh, two different bandits in this case, um, and the pink one has a true rate of return of 40%, the black one has a true rate of return of 60%, um, then we're gonna fit beta distributions to each one of these. And if we have a very little amount of information, these will be nice wide distributions. And that means when we sample from each of them, we will perhaps get the worst one, right? A fair, la fairly large percentage of the time. So that's our exploring. But as we explore and explore and explore more, these beta distributions tighten right up, right around uh, the true values, and we end up just exploiting the one that is the best. Right? Very intuitive, very clear, very nice. So, thanks for listening. 
Check back soon to learn more about projects we're tackling in data science here at Wayfair.